Hi guys, it's Freddy here, back on the desktop with this week's Retro RPG. And this week I would like to present this, Project Echo the Role-Playing Game by DreamPod9. A 1995 role-playing game based on the anime series Project Echo, uh, which is all about a Japanese schoolgirl from Meteor City called Eiko, her best friend Biko, and her rival Seiko. Um, Eiko has superpowers and ends up defending her best friend against alien attacks and all that. Biko is an alien princess, which is worshipped by a giant um, alien empire. And Seiko is the daughter of an industrialist who powers herself up by using powered suits, like a sort of Iron Man thing, but they all happen to look like bikini armor, which leads to much hilarity when men put the suits on to gain the superpowers that they're wandering around in bikinis. Anyway, um, if we have a look at the back of the book, um, that's just dialogue, which I'm not going to repeat. Um, tired of all the serious grim worlds of love triangles and mecha bashing intrigue. Ready to poke fun at all those popular mecha shows and anime in general. Ready for hours of gut-bursting laughter and spontaneous buffoonery. Drawing upon your own knowledge of Japanese anime or the world at large, as a ready source of puns and jokes. If you are, then immerse yourself in the world of Project Echo. Project Echo, the Robland game, is a comedy science fiction game complete with rules, equipment, and characters derived from Project Echo animated features. I was going to say series there. Also included in Project Echo, fighter card game that can be used on its own or with the Robland game, with 36 cards put, printed in full colour on quality stock. And, yes indeed, here they are in the back. All the cards. I have no idea how it works. I have not read it. I have no interest in card games. But Project Eco Fighter with throw, pound, shoot, dodge, slam, taunt. I imagine you play them out and if you throw better than somebody dodges, then you win. But that's a guess. Um, in the book itself, it's a fairly simplistic game. Um, going through an introduction, the fact that the book uses she as the default term, they felt necessary to point that out, which is odd coming up with one of the disadvantages we'll come to later. Um, you go through character creation, summary, character name and concept, background and personality, attribute selection, skill and talent selection, Secondary traits and damage thresholds, draw character or refine background. So we've got some concepts, you know, you can be the millionaire, the loser, the social misfit, the muscle man. You can work for United Earth Allied Command, helping fight off aliens as the cranky tech or the reservist, the smiley logistics officer. Background and personality. The attributes are simple. We've got agility, body, intelligence and looks. Um, they are rated up to 5, or down to negative 5. Uh, the system works by you roll 1d6 for each of the positives. If you roll a 6, then that counts. Any other 6s you roll, so if you're rolling 5d6 and you roll two 6s, a 5, a 4, and a 3... Um, you get six, seven, because you get plus one for every other six you roll. Um, so the system having a higher skill leads you far more likely to get a six, but a chance of getting a seven, eight, or nine. The negatives, you roll two dice. If you roll a one on either dice, then it's a critical fail. Um... And it gives you an idea how many points you get to start off with. So a player character gets 16. So you could have a plus 2 and everything else that's sort of plus 1s type thing. You're not going to be great. Skills are of that 
um, that you make them up yourself. So we've got example skills here. Combat skills, crack shot with pistols, slap loudly, smash objects over heads. To make the combat more descriptive, although probably more limited. And um, we've got move it skills, climb wall and fences, run really fast. Social skills, act pretentiously, pick up guys. Covert skills, crack safes, sneak around. Professional skills, be entertaining, take photographs, that kind of stuff. Artistic, create computer graphics, write satire. Engineering skills, build furniture up to repair power reactors. Academic skills, BS on essays, <laughs> quote dead poets. And hobbies, cheerleading, go clubbing, GM games. Hey, they've got games mastering in as a skill. Cool. And then you've got your talents, which are your sticks and flaws, uh, or sticks and crosses. So affiliation, you're a member of a larger group you can call on. Devices, you get high-tech devices. Superpowers and that. And your crosses, alcoholic, you talk and talk and talk and are distracting. The one I find very odd is gender crossing given that the game talks about uh, all characters being female by default in the game, I find it very odd that gender crossing would be down as a disadvantage, a weakness. Although it does point out you can easily pass yourself off as a being of the other gender if you are appropriately built. Um, you get secondary characteristics of stamina, unarmed damage, and your damage thresholds, bruised, wound, knocked out. And then we're on to the rules, which kind of explains that failing is probably the thing you want to do most, because that'll be funny. Uh, got plot points, combat, hazards, and we go through, vehicle rules, and it's over in a few pages. And then we're on to the background of the universe. The city that you're based in, the United Earth Alliance Command, the high school which you will probably be based out. And we're by 52, we're through both the world and the rules. 53, we've got Aiko, so her character sheet with her various stats. You know, she's got skills in acting like a teenage lovesick girl, keeping fit, knowing the city, knowing the latest fashions, noticing stuff. Her talents are super strength, super speed, invulnerability, and low self-control. Oh, I've got them mixed around. I thought Biko was her and Siko was her. I am wrong. There goes my memory. Ah. So Biko's the um, industrialist's daughter who has act pretentious and operate mecha and power suits and shoot guns. Snub others, use cosmetics. And she has talents of flunkies, power suit, super invention, obsession, and obsession with humiliating Aiko. And Seiko, we've got act wide eyed and amazed, cook gourmet meals, notice stuff, pout. She's got super influence, bad cooking, and obsession. So she has cook gourmet meals with bad cooking. Ah, the wacky hijinks. We've got one of their teachers. We've got an agent who is keeping an eye on Seiko, apparently. Um, Starship Captain that arrives. Uh, don't ask. It's a piss take on anime, so the characters are supposed to be amusing as per the Colonel. We've got some equipment. Vehicles, mecha, and we're into a, a sample adventure. Well, a few sample adventures, and then the rules for the card game. And that's it. Project Echo. It was a bit of an oddity. Um, we saw other role-playing games coming out which tried to simulate the whole anime world, but this one just did a single movie series. Not even one I thought was as major as it apparently is. Uh, there were far others. There was no, never an Akira or um, ah, the other. No, it's gone. 
but far larger, more famous ones. Uh, Vampire Hunter D, stuff like that, which to me seemed a lot more famous than Project Echo. But what do I know? Apparently nothing. Apparently I didn't even know the difference between the two characters. It's been that long. Ah, oh, I'm so old. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching and um, listening to me ramble on and get confused. It was on my birthday the other week. Must have clocked me over into old age. It was handy to know the line. So, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like hearing somebody ramble on and get things extremely wrong. But most of all, look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Okay? Bye now.